Welcome everyone, I'm My Time, this is WWE Supercard and before we kick off, I would like to thank you all this weekend for taking some time out from cleaning that chimney to let the fat man come down and take all your milk, your carrots, your cookies, your mince pies and your beloved brandy and to actually spend it here with me, so thank you for that. Moving on into the game now, before we get on to the PCC which is going to be the main focus of this episode, I would first of all like to say unfortunately I have left keep it tight so it is a sad day but the players there I didn't want to kick people and they were just casual players they weren't really into all the grinding so I felt that after getting rewards such as a rare Bruno San Martino and a super rare Dolph Ziggler that I needed to go for somewhere who were maybe looking at the slightly better cards because they don't have a place in my team anymore so thank you for all those of you who actually did reply when I said in the chat I didn't know that you got, should we say, a notification from your mailbox. I didn't know it about half an hour afterwards because obviously I made a team first of all and I invited people or people asked to join and I accepted them, etc. So I didn't know you got sent a notification. So by the time I'd done that, some of the teams had already filled and some of the people were like the team I was coming from and that was what I was trying to move away from. But so thank you for you who did like consider me and... I do appreciate it if you any of you happen to even watch this. But before we go on, I'm just going to say a big thanks to the team I'm in now. Hashtag the revolution. Just go for the members. So Reese is the owner. So thank you for inviting me. And we've also got Azkaz, Ed Murphy, Jimmy, Melissa, My Time, which is myself. Or myself. My Time is okay. Rob1, Rusty B, Tin Table 25, and finally Yellow McSwagger 69. So we will see how the next PCC goes, the Team PCC, but hopefully with these guys and girls I can help them get to the top 50 and would obviously help myself with a survivor card as a reward. But before then, PCC, and that's what today's episode is going to focus on. Now I'm going to click on here, very quickly going to show the rewards, and the reason why Jack Swagger is killing Alberto Del Rio it might be because people prefer Jack Swagger to Alberto Del Rio. I tend to call him Roberto Del Rio. I don't know why. I just prefer to mess around with his name. So I don't really like the guy as a character, as a wrestler, etc. So I probably would have gone for Jack Swagger anyway. And I did go for Jack Swagger. And it, I wasn't swayed by the low rewards because I am going to try and grind for 2150 today and tomorrow. I haven't really done too much so far kept myself around the five to seven thousand kind of mark so it would give me at least I won't have a massive massive push to do I should be able to get there okay about too much trouble touch wood using titles that is but if we go down to the should we say the sub rewards Bray Wyatt 680 power 690 charisma let's compare that, compare that to John Cena 706 715 there is no comparison now we go 670 toughness to 661 in speed, and we've got 686 toughness and 672 speed. There is just no comparison between the cards. Anybody who's not going for the event card but wants to get a survival card will obviously go for the John Cena. The majority of people will anyway, unless they like Bray Wyatt. And to swing it even further in Swagger's favour, if you scroll down, you've got the Rock. I was going to say the Rolf. You've got the Rock versus the Dolph. Now. I don't, won't click on those stats, but once again, The Rock is a much better card, and it's going to sway people in the rewards. Now, those people who grind it out for the Undertaker event card are going to want Alberto, because that will be a compatible tag. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, great. And that's probably why he's got as many points as he has. But everyone else pretty much will be going for Jack Swagger. And myself, I don't have The Undertaker, so Jack Swagger is fine by me. So let's click on Play For Your Superstar. Now, with this team I have here, um, I'm going to change it because this is a team I was running for a while but I it's not as should we say guaranteed as the team I'm going to show you I mean here I had I've trained up my Rusev he's played 30 matches everywhere and and he's obviously got all his um, all his stats now uh, if we click on John Cena see he's been trained up haven't done the the tokens and over here Shamer have been trained up, proed him and haven't put the tokens on. So we're going to take out 
Rusev and we're going to put in the rock okay now I'm also going to take out the Sheamus for the time being and put in the other John Cena okay so this is the team I'm going to show you and this is the kind of team that I would recommend you try to do the grinding with and I'm going to explain why now some people will use say for example three male superstars which are pros maybe and then have a bad male superstar and two really bad females and while that tactic obviously can work as well you're hoping you don't get two solo diva matches now they're obviously not as common which is why people do it you can have a diva tag because you're hoping if you get diva tag you will still win the male tag and a male solo or two male solos or possibly even two male tags but I prefer to do it this way. I prefer to do it that I can win most of the Diva matches and I can win a good chance to win two in a male matches. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, I am just in Survivor tier, okay? Just in Survivor tier. So if I'm playing plus tens, most of the time I should be playing people either in the middle to the top end of Survivor tier. If I'm unlucky, I might get a few people in Survivor plus, but I won't be coming up against people in Survivor plus plus, okay? So that's good for me because I'm doing plus fives I want to get as many points as possible if you're doing plus ones or plus threes then you can use a different team because the games are going to be easier overall if you're trying to do plus fives and you're finding you're losing too many this will help you because you want to be just in the tier so let's say if you are a epic player and you're an epic plus you can drop down to epic I'm not saying drop down into ultra rare so stay in the kind of current tier you're in but put yourself on the very curb of or the lisp of the bracket if you can so you just want to be in it you don't want to be at the top end because you don't want to be playing people in the tier above and the tier above that on a regular basis you want to be able to be people who are around your level or at least in your in your tier because that's going to give you a chance to win and it's going to give you a chance to win because you're putting in cards like here my two john Cena's, which aren't in the same tier level so those two john Cena's should be in an, a legendary tier deck um they shouldn't be in the survivor because they don't have the points if they were all john cena's in here i'd be in legendary tier or epic plus plus or something like that okay i wouldn't be in survivor tier so i have a cameron pro which isn't the best legendary diva but she is pro which is fine she's not um compatible with my nikki bella but she's not incompatible so i won't get any negative you know effect of having her in a tag now my nikki bella is an event pro now she's going to be better than any legendary pro with basic stats and she'll beat most of the legendary pros if they proc as well so the only time she'll come in trouble is against potentially another Nikki Bella now being in survivor tin just being in it I'm very unlikely to come up against people with diva survivor pros because I'm only going to be coming up against people in the plus five so at the top end of survivor tier or maybe just about into survivor plus so there could be one person in a hundred which has a survivor pro diva but it's very unlikely very unlikely so she is kind of divas are kind of my bankers now not that i will win every diva match because i said i could come up against another nikki bella and i will do as you'll probably see in the video but hopefully i should win most of them now my two john cena's are there for training my bret hart is the card which is there to win matches okay there's going to be literally nobody in just into Survivor tier or halfway into Survivor tier who's going to have a Survivor Pro. Now, they will have event pros. They will have the legendary event pros from, obviously, months ago, whether it be Fimbalor, Roberto de Ayo, uh, Ibac, uh, who else was there? There was an Undertaker, you know, all these kind of people that are going to be better than a normal legendary card. He is better than them. If I click on improve, I haven't maxed him out for purpose for when I was using this. He's maxed out in his games, yes, but he's not got any tokens yet, and I haven't finished maxing out his um his level. And I won't after PCC because I want him to be good enough to be all those legendary pros. So if any of them proc, whether it's I don't know, Berto de Rio or whoever, or sorry, Roberto de Ayo, any of them proc, he should still have enough in all his stats, including speed. To beat them none of them should get above 2100 um, in a proc even if they've been leveled up massively in that thing so most of them will only get into the 2000 2050 or so so he can beat all those cards the last card and the most important card in here is the rock now you need to have a card which is 
probably a top 10 club like The Rock, Shawn Michaels, John Cena, possibly even Triple H or Stone Cold would be good cards to do this with. Now, I didn't make The Rock specifically for this event for PCC, but he's the best card I've got for it, so I'll show you why. Now, the two things which are good with The Rock. One, he is compatible with my Bret Hart and he's also compatible with both of my feeding cards. Now it helps if one of your feeding cards or one of your training cards is compatible in case you get caught out in the matches, you've got a tag and you'll still give your good card the bonus and them a bonus and you can still win some matches. But that that's like a side bonus, it's not imperative, it's just nice if you do have that. The main thing here is his stats. Now if you look a medium, so he's got 1557 in power. Anything above 1550 is good, okay? It's good for a legendary card. Anything above 1575 is going to be classed as great. So he's got good power, really good power. He's got great charisma. Now, his speed's lacking slightly, and his toughness is obviously down a bit. But, and here's the but, my two supports here, which are plus 19 to all stats and plus 25 to toughness, are here for the rock. So what that means is if it's a speed match, I can add the plus 19 and it will boost his overall speed up to 1558, which puts it above that 1550 bracket. So he's then going to have good speed against the majority of cards and hopefully beat them. And same with the toughness, add 75, it's going to put him up to 1558, again above the 1550 mark. So that means whenever I'm using my rock card, his stats, every stat is going to be above 1555. His weakest stat will be um, would be his speed because obviously the power and the charisma if I use a plus 19 would also go up 19 so without prox and this prox can ruin you and this is why it's not you know a given that you will win without prox he should beat the majority of legendary cars that he comes against the little legendary pros that is not the events but the legendary normal legendary pros so let's see if we can put this in action as I said remember if you're in epic for example changes around so your Bret Hart would be a so your Bret Hart would be a legendary card which you haven't fully maxed out okay so it's it's good enough to beat all your epic cards so it's about 12 50 1300 and all its stats but not quite maxed out your rock will be your best epic card and the two John Cena's I had would be uh, two cards you're training up two epic cards you're training up for example so they're solo epic cards that you've you're just starting to train keep you in the epic tier and then your two divas you're going to want to have same thing again you're going to have a epic diva pro and ideally either two epic diva pros if you haven't got a legendary one or a legendary diva pro which you haven't fully maxed out again but it's good enough to beat all the all the epic divas okay so that's what you're going to want to do for example if it was an epic now let's go into the match and we will go play so you don't really want to be playing people with 25, excuse me, thousand games. I played about 9,400. 9, if you come up against someone and you lose, just make a mental note so the next time you'll come and you won't play them. But I'm going to show you the tactic that I use now in a few games, and hopefully you'll see why I use it and you know why you use certain cards in certain situations. So, tag team power charisma. Now, what I will do here is I will use both of my feeder cards and the idea I'm doing that is because if I use my rock and my Bret Hart yes I will win the match but then I'm relying on one of the next two matches being called to be a diva match because if it isn't a diva match and I get two solo males I've lost whereas if I lose this first match and I get a male tag team and a diva I've got a good chance of winning two single males I've got a good chance of winning two divas I've still got a chance of winning so I'll throw away my two John Cena's to get trained up and I will go 1-0 down. Next match, tag team power and speed. Okay, I have no choice. I have to use this tag team, but as you can see here, it's a comfortable win once again because my rock is a strong card in the tier and obviously my um, Brett is designed to be all legendary cards and event cards that are legendary and obviously they tag. Now it's one all, I will use my boost in this case here. I didn't use my boost in the rock before because it was a tag team and they were getting a boost. So I saved it for the diva because it was one all. 
And here we go. So Nikki Bella is going to beat Bailey. The only problem I would have had would potentially be if she propped and then if it was like in speed or something, my Nikki's not great in speed. Remember, I made this Nikki Bella before using her in PCC, so I have to go with what I've got. And I win 2-1. Now, 2-1 wins are good because when you come to PCC, you only get two ball picks, not three, which means it's slightly quicker with the ball picking um, stage. Not the way to network, doesn't make any difference there, but it's slightly quicker with the ball picking stage. And also, you're picking, you'll be picking, if you get three picks, that's 50% more picks every time. And what that's gonna mean is your car catalog is gonna fill up quicker, which means you have to keep coming out of the event to go and train away cars, etc., etc., which is gonna be time consuming. That's gonna cost you more in the long run so you're best to if you can win 2-1 win 2-1 so if you turn them up you're happy to throw the third game and that's where it also helps to have a week of cards or two weaker cards in your deck so you can pretty much guarantee yourself to lose a game if you need to so let's go to play superstar we'll play Soko here now notice i'm just going to be clicking on whoever's in plus 10 as long as i don't have 20,000 17,000 games played i might even do that next then do this now if you come up against someone like I've had DT Breezy come in my plus 10 I didn't even try to play him because even if he is using a weaker deck like to use a similar situation to I'm doing so he so he can guarantee himself to try and win more games and using his best deck and coming up against other good good decks then he's still probably going to have a deck that's going to smash me so tag team charisma same idea again we throw him with two cards bear in mind that the computer does tend to like it tends to favour using the better cards early. Maybe one in five matches, they'll save their best card to the end. But as you saw there, the event, the event pro legendary uh, Roberto de Ayo, he come out in the tag team. So now I've got this tag team again. Let's see what they got left. There you go. They got two legendary pros. So it's a bit like last time. Uh, some of the better cards come out first, and now they've got some the slightly weaker card. Not that they're weak. Not that John Cena and Shawn Michaels are bad legendary cards. They just weren't as good as that. Um, Roberto and finally Diva Speed same again now I will use the boost on Nikki Bella just in case and as you see here I am still going to lose aren't I because it was speed okay so here you go this is a good example this is an example of where I've lost because there's nothing I could do about it nothing I could do and you will get a few defeats like this along the way oh, don't have to give me a weight in the network as well yeah I played it the way it should do or the, or the way that would and I unfortunately lost due to a proc and I, you can't you can't stop that you will lose the odd games due to procs and you even sometimes lose your games because you try to um, maybe second guess yourself or something and do something that you shouldn't have done or, and go away from the tried and tested method stick to what to what works okay don't try and be clever here this guy's played 4,000 games. I know he's going to have a lot of pros and stuff because to be up in this tier and to be a plus 10 for me in this example, he's got to bought a lot of packs and he's going to have a lot of legendary pros. Maybe a legendary event pro from before, uh, but he's not going to have like survivor pros. It's unlikely. So we'll use Bret Hart. Here you go, the Undertaker event pro, but Bret's good enough to beat all event cards so this is why it's important that Brett was good enough to beat any card within reason that I was going to come up against because as I said before my Nikki Bella isn't a dead cert she's just like 95% of the time now I could use my rock um, and one of my John Cena's hoping that I would win the tag match but I'm not in case the last game is a single male so I'm going to play the safe route I would have lost this because even though they're not a compatible tag and on mine would have been, uh, they will still have better stats than me overall. So if it's a solo male, this was a good choice. It happens to be a diva match, so I used a charisma boost for the sake of it, and I will win this as long as I don't get completely screwed by Prox, which I won't. So yeah, it would have been tempting for me to use the Rock and a John Cena to try to try and win it two 0 then, but if I had a failed and it had to come up as a male then I would have lost. So that's that's an example of what I'm trying to say of don't always uh, try to don't always try to second guess yourself and be clever. Go with the strategy that works. You know, winning is more important than trying to 
winning 3-0 is better than trying to win 2-1 and losing 2-1 or you know trying to be clever with your with your tactic in a match you're better to do what you know I know that I should be using what they have and I shouldn't be using my boost because I want to save the boost um, just in case I need it later on if I'm 1-0 up it's better to have the boost from 1-0 down it's better to have the boost so speed again here I go and use my threat I don't put any boost ever on Brett because again he, I'm not coming up against survivor pros here at the moment and he'll beat all the other ones now it's the case I don't mind if I lose this in fact it's good if I would lose uh, Cameron's propped so it's not going to lose but if she hadn't propped she would have lost so we win this 3-0 take the three ball picks and we come on now I'm not going to play too many more games because I'm not really grinding here uh, although I am contributing towards my rank was that 58 100. Yeah, I need to put a lot more work in, but you can you can see what I'm doing. Keith, here you go for 13,000, 14,000 games, just to show you that it will still work against these people. Uh, it still work against people with lots of um, lots more games than you. Tag team, throw away. Don't try and be clever. This isn't good to see because obviously I'm assuming this guy's going to have better cards than pro. Booker T's and Dolph Ziggler's. Hopefully, he hasn't got too many good divas. But don't be clever. This tactic works more often than not. Charisma have to use, have to use Brett. I can't keep him back for the last match, even if they've got a legendary event card as their last card, which they really could do. And he beats my, beats my rock. If the last match is a diva, then maybe I'll still win. Diva power and speed. Okay, use the boost because I've got it left. Use Nikki Bella, and we win. So even though this guy had played, like, maybe he's got a really good card behind and the computer just hasn't used it. I don't know, but I didn't try to be clever. I didn't try to second guess it and think he's definitely going to have a good card left at the end. I just played the, played the matches out the way that I would play the most of the time, 95% of the time. And 95% of the time, you know, I will win from that. So if you take this, we take the rewards. 2-1 was good. It was quicker. We'll play the last match then. This will be the last match in this team PCC. Not going to not gonna go for someone else. Ignacio, this is what, nearly 18,000 games. A lot of you might be thinking, how oh, would it be clicking people with that many games? And I don't blame you. I wouldn't if I was further up in this tier. If I was halfway three quarters up to five tier, I wouldn't because I'd be playing people at the top end of Survivor Plus and possibly the bottom end of Survivor Plus Plus. Here we go. Solo match. What do we do? You got it. Brett Hart. Bret Hart. Always Bret Hart when it's solo first. Always Bret Hart. Yeah. Um, that animation of Bret Hart. I mean, just quickly, who thought that was a good idea? I mean, who designed that and how did it get into the game? I mean, I don't believe that one person designs it and it goes straight into the game by anybody else seeing it, you know, and then that's it, it's there, it's stuck. There must have been a team, a group of people, whatever it's sort of, we've got to go, John, I'd really like to congratulate you on that Bret Hart animation, is yes. That, that power, power, uh, power driver, power driver, that pile driver even, great. And into the humping, oh, awesome. The thrusting motion of Brett there. Top draw, mate. Have a beer on us tonight. I, mean, I don't know where the logic come from. It's just an awful animation, but oh well. Okay, so now we go back to now. Single, single, uh, toughness. In comes my boost. Onto the rock. And we beat Jack. No, we lose to Jack Swag, okay? There you go. I would have beaten him without his prop. Now, this, I can't do anything about this. If this is a loss, it's a loss. Now, I pray I get a diva match at the end. I've had two mils, so there is a good chance I get a diva match, and I don't. So, I just have to either quit the game, so I don't get a loss, or just take the loss. And here, I will take the loss, okay? So, nothing I can do here. This is another example of how, as I mentioned at the start, you will sometimes lose matches from the procs, even with this kind of strategy, and I can't help that. All I can help is I would have won without the prox. I'd have won my matches without the prox. So we'll play one more. Right, this guy I'm not going to play because he's got a an event undertaken. I could play him, hoping it's a solo match first of all, and I then throw away a card. That would be an example that I wouldn't do it because his avatar tells me he's got that undertaker event card. 
this would be the time that I would play differently. I wouldn't throw out, if it was a solo match first, I would not throw out Bret Hart. I'd throw out one of my John Cena's, assuming that most of the time The Undertaker's going to come out straight away. And in fact, I should have actually played that to show you. Um, we will see if I can get someone with an Undertaker up very quickly after this game. If I can't, I'll leave it. But we're going to run through this, you know. Back onto The Rock for the second match. Okay, speed. It has propped again. Seth Rollins has propped. He's going to beat me thanks to the proc. I can't do anything about this. Proc again. Diva. No, no Diva match. So now I've lost again. Now I have lost because I got out propped. I have not lost because of bad decisions. You can't do anything about it. So two games in a row now that I've technically lost that I shouldn't have lost if it wasn't for procs. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't stop that. You might have the same, the same, should we say, bad luck. Two games in a row. Up until then, I'll play Animal. You know, it was it was going okay. Now, you can obviously, as I said, pick pick your opponents. If you do come against someone and they have a better deck than you anticipated, you can not play them. Now, some of you might say, why don't you use the Rock first of all? Now, the reason I don't use the Rock first of all is because most of the time, the better cards come out straight away. So, if a... Um, I will use the toughness on Nikki Bella in case I come up against another Nikki Bella. Okay, this is where I use the toughness instead of the rocks. I'm not guaranteed to use the rock in the final game, so I will use the I will use the boost on the diva. Okay, last game, and I lose. So that's fine. See, without that boost, I would have possibly have lost that match. So uh, it can work in your favour. But if it wasn't for Prox, then you could probably use this strategy, and I'd say 95% of the time you would win every match. Uh, with the Prox being there, it's not going to be quite that high. Uh, Bobby has played far too many games for me to be showing you this, but it's just, uh, as I said, it's just a kind of... Um, it doesn't matter if I lose in a moment. I'm just trying to show you the idea. So I hope it's a solo match. Please be a solo match. Please be a solo match. Cool. I'm going to assume that that Undertaker is coming out first, okay? Because it tends to lot. So in you go, John Cena. And it wasn't the Undertaker, okay? So that's bad for me because I could have won that match. So now I'm hoping we get a Diva match. I have to use my boost here. And I'm probably going to see that Undertaker. Okay, I do. Good news for me is... He's with another bad card, so I will win this match. Um, so as it's worked out here, it's not too bad. That's one of the beauties about having a compatible tag. Now, I knew the Undertaker card was there. The computer normally uses it early on. It didn't this time. As long as it doesn't give me solo match at the end, I would have definitely lost. Had a bit of luck here. I can still win this, and I will win it. So there was a guy who played 23 or 24,000 games. He had an event pro undertaker which beats all my cards and i've still come out on one two one so the game can work in your favor just because the guy's got loads of cards doesn't matter if you know they've got a card like that then it can it can help you sometimes but anyway i have done this episode before i'll be i'll be honest and it was corrupted in that one i didn't lose a game until the last match which i actually lost on purpose to well I lost using a different strategy and to show you why I don't use it and it was working really well but I couldn't bother to do all the editing if I thought I'd just run it again and lo and behold guess what I lost more matches than I anticipated but I hope you at least see the the kind of fault behind this strategy I hope you see that the matches that I did lose were down to the randomness of the proc and obviously the stats at question because my cards couldn't proc in speed and toughness so i was relying for those matches not to be proc if it had been power and charisma then i would have had a chance to proc as well and you know could have won even if they proc so you can't do anything about that but what you can hopefully see you can do is you can win pretty much all your matches with your best card ak Bret Hart for me you should have a good chance of winning your matches with your second card ak the rock for me and you should have a good chance of winning both um, the Diva tag and at least one solo Diva match with the Diva lineup if you follow this kind of strategy. Now, I hope this helps you with 
uh, PCC. I hope you get something in time that you can actually benefit from it. If not, hopefully it helps you in the future. Thank you very much for watching once again. I'm my time, and I'll see you all soon.